Okay, so um, let's go back now to the designer. And let's add a few more enhancements. We're going to use the designer to add these enhancements. Uh, and one thing to note is that once your screen is in a rich display for file format, there's really no limitation as to what kind of things you can do with your application. You can add any type of feature that the web has to offer. And you're not really constrained by a character 24 by 80 grid anymore. So you can add features such as drag and drop, dynamic images, export to Excel, use graphical widgets like a date picker or a tab panel. So let me show you some of these possible enhancements. So the first thing that I'm going to do is add export to Excel. So I'm going to click on the grid. And because all of the records are loaded at once, all of the records are on the client side, it is very easy to export to Excel. And in our for found UI rich display file, you simply set these properties. So I'm going to set CSV export to true. And in this case, I also want to export the headings. I'm going to set this to true. And you can see that there's a little bar at the bottom of the subfile now that simply allows me to click a link to export the information to Excel. So that's all that it takes. Now let's move on to the next screen. And in this screen, what I'm going to do is add a tab panel, and I'm going to also add a line chart uh, to, uh, that, that's going to show me sales of the product. You can see that most of everything that I'm doing is just simple point and click type operation. So here's my chart. And my sales data is stored in a separate database file uh, that's on the system called SalesP. And I'm going to go and specify where the data comes from. So here's my database file. I'm going to specify uh, for the name field, we're going to use, actually we're going to use months. And for the value field, we're going to use sales. So in this case, I am also going to add a selection criteria. The selection criteria is going to be dynamic and it's going to be based on a product ID and it's actually built by adding a simple line of code to the RPG, which I've already done. And it, that line of code defines a variable called prod select. So this is a great example where having direct access to the RPG variables in your programs can really help us out. On the other hand, if you were to use refacing, you don't really have this type of access you can, since you can only work with 5250 output or the data that has been put out by the program out to the underlying green screen. Okay, so moving on to the next screen. I'm going to add a title to this window. And I'm going to do something interesting with the subfile. I'm going to add a dynamic image. So I'm going to do some resizing first. So make these rows bigger. And then add a column. And then we'll grab an image. Size it down a little bit. And I'll put that into the subfile. Now again, the image URL is going to come directly from a field that I have in my uh, categories database file that is used to load the subfile, or it could even come from a work variable in my RPG program. So in this case, I happen to know uh, the name of that field, and I'm going to go ahead and 
do the binding to that field right here. And one more change that I'm going to do here uh, is make a uh, select a property that will make sure that the row is highlighted when I click to select the category. So that, call, that property is called row selection, and we're going to set set it to single. So now let's compile. We'll recompile everything. We'll also go back and recompile the RPG program. And we'll launch the program again. Let's look at our first change, which is the export to Excel. I simply click the link, click open, and I get the Excel spreadsheet with all of the data. Let's close this down. Let's look at a specific record. First look at monthly sales. So here's our monthly sales chart that comes from real-time data. And let's also look at the category prompt window. So you can see that we've added uh, the product image. And I'm able to select a specific category and it will go back to my screen. All right, so just to show you a little bit of variety, let's spend a few minutes and convert our other program, which is our customer uh, maintenance program. Again, I'm going to switch over to my designer, and I'm going to click the Convert button. And we'll type in the name of the display file and click Convert. Okay, so one of the main differences here in this particular program is that this is not a load all sub file, and the converter had to create what we call a paging bar rather than use a scroll bar. So you can see the paging bar at the bottom with the previous and next links. So in this case, the program does not send all of the data to the user interface, and probably for good reason because there might be a lot of records. But since we're not constrained by the 5250 anymore, it is very easy to add additional sets of rows if we need them. So you can see how that's done. And I can remove them or add them. You also notice this is a multi-line subfile with row folding. And we have a little icon over here that will facilitate this for us. So this um, will work when we click the icon, but of course the original standard function key will work as well. So our other panels were also converted and they came through just fine. So we're ready to save compile And just to save us time, I've already gone in and added the handler keyword into this particular program. So I simply go to my screen here, and I'll, I'll compile a customer maintenance program. And then I'm going to launch it. So as you can see, the paging bar here allows me to page through the records. You'll notice that I can page back a little quicker than I can page forward because the records have been cached in this particular case. I can also fold and unfold the records. And this is also something that's going to work pretty fast because there's not a trip to the server that the, the browser is making. This is all happening on the client side. And because the record data is already on the client, there's a nice little feature that the converter added for us. 
And that feature is called single row zoom. So I can go into a specific row and I can click the little zoom icon and I get to see uh, the entire contents of that record without having to fold and unfold the, the entire set of records. So again, this is one of those features that we can only accomplish with the DDS conversion tool uh, because it works directly with the RPG code, but we cannot accomplish this with a 5250 refacing tool. Okay, so now let's take a quick look at validation. So in a rich display file, both client-side validation and server-side validation can appear as a nice um, as a nice little tooltip. So here I've entered an invalid value and there's a tooltip pointing at the field that has the problem and it's showing me what the valid values are. For server-side validation, same thing. So the state code is invalid. It's set the appropriate indicator on and, uh, and the um, RPG, program val um, RPG program validated this and set the appropriate indicator on. Just to kind of clarify how this works, if we were to go back to the designer and look at these fields, you'll see that the customer rating field has valid values under the validation section. And the state field has an, a server-side error message assigned to it. And it's based on an error condition of an indicator 30, which the program sets on. And just to make it clear on where this information came from, let's go real quick and look at the DDS. The original green screen DDS. So if I were to go into the particular panel and look at the validity checking for the rating field, here's my list of valid values. That's where that came from. If I were to look at the state field, and go under error messages, here's where the server-side error message came from. All right, so this just about wraps up my part of the presentation. Hopefully, the concepts that I've demonstrated today are starting to make sense, and you're getting a feel for what the DDS conversion can do and how the capabilities compare to the capabilities of the refacing tool.